Hi guys, welcome to another Chama Valley Maths tutorial. It's Mr. Gordon here. Um, I'm going to be looking at the AQA Core Maths paper, um, the, the statistical paper, paper two, and I'm going to be working on the Casio calculator. If you have a if you have a sharp calculator, I have done a video that explains all of the um, sharp functions. So go and look up the sharp calculator skills video. So this question is number six in the paper. It's uh, talking about two methods are often used to predict the height of um, the height a child will reach as an adult. So method A uses the height of the child's parents, so we're predicting the child's height from the parents' height. Method B it uses the child's height at age 18 months. So however tall the baby or child is at 18 months, then we can predict their adult height from that. So the table sh uh, below shows. For 10 women, their predicted adult height and their actual adult height. So use, um, using both method A and method B. Okay, so with method A, they've shown uh, on the top line what the predicted um, height would be from using that method, using the parent's um, height, and what their actual height was when they were measured, when they, when they were an adult. So method B is using the height that, um, so they measured the, the, the people when they're 18 months and then um, that model predicted these heights okay so method B thought that person the first person was going to be 158 um, centimeters tall but their actual height when they reached adult um, age was 154 and we're asked to calculate the product moment correlation coefficient or PMCC for short, for both methods. So how do we do that? Um, I'm going to be using the, the calculator to enter the data and then pull off the value that we want. And the value that we need on the calculator is donated by this little R. So PMCC is is represented by an R on the on the calculators. Okay, so how do we put the data in and work out the, the the PMCC values for these two these two um, methods. So on the Casio you, you're going to have to press mode first and that will bring you to this screen or something similar and you want the stats option on my model it's um, number two so I've pressed two and I've got this screen in front of me now and I want the A plus BX very similar to linear regression so I want option two here and then I'll be brought to a screen where I can enter the data. Now the data is in pairs, so you've almost got like um, data that you could enter onto a scatter graph. So you've got an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So the X values for method A are the ones in the top uh, row, so the predicted adult height. Those values along here would go in the X column. And the corresponding Y values, so the actual adult height those would go in the y column so you're entering that data with this uh, row the top row going downwards in the x column and the second row going downwards in the y column once you've entered all that data you need to press ac and then shift one and that will bring you into the stats options so the stats option we we want again like i said it's very similar to a linear regression because you can actually plot this on a scatter graph and, and have a, a line of best fit going through it, or a regression line if you like. So you want number seven, which is regression. If it's something else on your calculator, then obviously press that, but you're looking for REG. And then you're brought to this screen. Now, if you've done the linear regression video and the questions, you'll know that for, for linear regression, we wanted the A and the B value, and the A was the y-intercept of the line of best fit, and the B was the gradient of the line of best fit, the regression line. This time we want the R value. So on my calculator it's option 3. Okay, And if you've entered that data correctly, you should get a value for method A of 0 0.776. So I've rounded that up to three decimal places. So pause the video, enter the data, and see if you get an R value that matches mine. And then repeat that process for method B, and see if you get a similar um, answer here as well okay so pause the video have a go at that and then we'll move on so hopefully you've had a go at that 
Um, and that first part was only worth two marks. So if you got those two values, that was the two marks, okay? Hence why we're using the calculator to do it, because there's no marks um, for doing this by hand. So the next part, part B, is just asking us to, part B says, using the more accurate method. So using the more accurate method, predict the actual adult height of a person whose predicted adult height is 165. Well, which one of those two methods, was it method A or method B, was the most accurate? Let's have a quick look and, and see what the R value actually stands for. So the value that you're generating, the PMCC value, tells you how strong the correlation is between, in the data. So how strong is the correlation between the predicted adult height and the actual adult height for method A? Well, the strength of the correlation is 0 0.776. And the strength of the correlation for this data is 0 0.947. Well, what does that mean? Um, I've got some, some diagrams here to help you try and understand what these values are actually telling you. Um, and we'll start with this one here. So if you have an R value of 1, then your data is perfectly correlated for, for positive correlation. So it has a, it's all in a perfect straight line heading upwards in the positive direction. It's got a positive gradient. If you have slightly less than 1, say 0 0.7, your data will look something like this if you plotted it on a scatter graph. Okay, so it's not as strong, is it? Slightly more spread out. If you've got a value of zero or close to zero, then you really don't have any correlations at all. Um, and I don't want you to think that the, the smaller the value, the worse the correlation, because if you go to minus one, then that's perfect negative correlation. And something slightly less than minus one, like not, minus 0 0.7, will look something like this, still negative, but slightly more spread out. So actually the data goes between one and minus one, the values that you can get for the PMCC are between one and minus one. Okay, one being the strongest for positive and minus one being the strongest for negative. So in our uh, question, it should be obvious which is the strongest one. This method B is pretty much very close to one. It's very strong. It might look something like this. Okay, just not as perfect. And the method A is slightly more spread out like this. So we're actually going to use method B for the second part of the question, because that's the more reliable, it's got the stronger correlation. Just a side note here, if you're reading the mark schemes for this question, I think they've made a mistake with method A, because um, all my students and myself, we've got 0 0.76 when we've done this question, and in the mark scheme it says 0 0.930, so I'd be wary of that. Um, and the reason why I think that we're right and the mark scheme is wrong is because the second value is spot on. So I think we're doing the second one right, and also the first one right, but there's been a mistake made there. Um, so let's carry on with part uh, part B, which is carrying six marks. This question is quite a big question. And it says, um, use the more accurate method, like I said, because, so that's method B for us, uh, to predict the actual height of a person whose predicted height is 165. So if someone had been predicted in this column here, 165, then what would the... Um, the method predict them, predict their actual height to be. Now, you could be mistaken for thinking, well, look, there's, there's, there's 165 in the table, and this method, and the actual height of that person is 169. So you might think, oh, I'll write down 169. But actually, what you've got to do is you've got to work out the um, regression line equation. Okay, and if you watch the linear regression video, that will become much more clear as to, to what that's all about. But I'm just going to show you how you work out the, the regression line um, equation. So what you want to do is hopefully you've still got um, all of your data for method B in your calculator. And you want to work out, using the, um, the buttons, you want to work out the A value and the B value. So you want to get to this point again with, with the data for method B in your calculator. Enter it all. Hopefully it's still in there. Go to the regression. And then... We found the R value, but we actually want the A value and the B value, and we want to make a note of those, okay? Because that is the, um, that's going to be, A is the, the Y-intercept, 
So if you're plotting it on a graph, this would be where it crosses the y-axis, uh, minus 136.4, and b would be the gradient. And you should be getting these values when you, you work them out on your calculator. Now I need to put them into um, the regression line equation. And let's just flick back to see, on the calculator, when you're doing this, um, the option we pressed was a plus bx. So the regression line equation is y equals a plus bx. Now the a value is a minus 136.4. So we would just pop that in there. And the B value, which is the gradient, is 1.84. Okay, so we've, we've replaced B with that number. And once you've done that, you should be getting something that looks a little bit like this. Okay, so this formula here. And you'll notice that I haven't actually got Y because, well, in the tables it says that Y, on the Y values, these ones here, are donated by a little a, so I pop the little a in place of y, and the x values, the ones we entered into the x column, are donated by this um, p p a, or what's p a for that one, but it's actually p b for this one. Okay, so again, that's another error in the mark scheme there, because I pulled this from the mark scheme. This should say p b. Anyway, so what does that mean? Well, it says. If you want to work out someone's, so look, little a, actual adult height. If you want to know their actual adult height, then if this equals 1.84 times the predicted height minus 136.4. So for this question, all we've got to do is to replace the predicted adult height, so the PA bit, with 165, and then it will tell us the answer. It will tell us what the actual height of that person should be from the regression line. So I'm going to pull up my calculator and type this in and see what we get. So I'm just going to type in using this calculator. I know you can't see all of it but um, trust me I'm typing this in. So 1.84 and now because I'm substituting in for PA I'm just going to put a bracket in and the value I'm substituting in is 165. That is the predicted adult height. So I'll put in 165 and then the rest of the formula says minus 136.4, okay? And that should give us 167.2. So the regression line for method B is predicting that if someone is 165, if their predicted height, sorry, is 165, then their actual adult height should be 167.2. And that is there in the mark scheme so 167.2 i hope that's given you some idea of how to complete that question and keep checking the uh, youtube channel for new videos thank you oh, oh.